Hey, hey, hey. Time for the last one. I hope. The last one on vessels. All right, so we've been talking a lot about blood pressure. Well, how do we control it? There are three parts of your medulla oblongata that we would consider cardiovascular centers that we would consider to control blood pressure. So two of these we met already. We met the cardioacceleratory and the cardioinhibitory center. We have not met the vasomotor center. Let's run through the scenario of what happens when we turn the vasomotor center on. Turn the vasomotor center on, and you're going to get increased sympathetic output to your arterioles. This is going to cause generalized vasoconstriction. Obviously, you'll have more norepinephrine. Generalized vasoconstriction is going to cause peripheral resistance to go up, which is then going to cause blood pressure to go up as well. Now, of course, if you know what an increase in vasomotor activity does, you can certainly figure out what a decrease will do. Let's review the cardioacceleratory center. If you turn it on, you'll have more sympathetic output of the heart, more norepi upon the heart. Heart rate, up, stroke volume, up. That'll cause cardiac output and thus blood pressure to increase as well. Notice that the vasomotor and the cardioacceleratory center both have the same effect. Both of them are going to cause the blood pressure to rise. All right. What if we turn the inhibitory center on? If we turn the inhibitory center on, we're going to have more parasympathetic outflow to the heart, you know, more acetylcholine upon the heart. And this is going to cause heart rate to go down, cardiac output, and blood pressure to go down as well. Now, we use these centers during our day-to-day -day fluctuating control of blood pressure that happens as a result of an autonomic reflex called the baroreceptor reflex. Baro means pressure. So baroreceptors are these specialized neurons that we have in our aortic arch. They measure the pressure in the aortic arch, which makes sense because aortic blood is going everywhere. We also have these pressure-sensitive neurons, baroreceptors, in a widening a wide portion of the dilation of our carotid artery, and those are called carotid sinus baroreceptors. So we have these baroreceptors in these two places. These baroreceptors, they're constantly measuring blood pressure, and they're sending signals up to those cardiac centers and the vasomotor center in the medulla via the ninth and 10th cranial nerves. The two carotid sinus um, and the two carotid sinus regions with baroreceptors, those baroreceptors are sending signals up to the medulla via cranial nerve number nine, which I know you remember from AMP1 is the glossopharyngeal nerve. Meanwhile, the aortic receptors are sending signals up to the medulla via cranial nerve number 10, which is the vagus nerve. Now, these signals, their frequency depends on the blood pressure. Their frequency is directly proportional to your mean arterial pressure. So depending on what pressure is doing, that's going to affect the frequency of these signals, which is then going to affect the activity of the cardiac centers. They adjust their activity so as to adjust blood pressure. Now, you might be wondering, well, okay, if you've got this awesome system, and it's pretty awesome, to control blood pressure, how can people get high blood pressure? Well, here's what happened. When people's blood pressure goes up and stays elevated, the baroreceptors adapt. They think the, the high is normal. They adapt to a new normal. Kind of unfortunate. Yeah, it's, we can't fix chronic high blood pressure. You also might be wondering what happens to these baroreceptors during exercise. Ask me about that, and I'll tell you. Skip this. We'll do this in class. Skip this. We'll do this in class, too. All right, let's talk about another thing that affects blood pressure, something called the adrenal medullary mechanism. All right, so you guys know we have adrenal glands on top of our kidneys. There they are. Ad means next to. Ad renal next to the kidneys. And... These guys release epinephrine, plus a little bit of norepinephrine, in response to large drops in MAP, in response to increases in exercise, physical activity, or stressful situations. 
obviously, what is epinephrine going to do to blood pressure during such a response? Well, let's think about it. If you did release more epinephrine, say because this grizzly bear all of a sudden shambled along in front of you on the trail and gave you this view of all of her teeth, well, what would happen to heart rate, stroke volume, cardiac output, total peripheral resistance, and blood pressure? The same thing would happen to each one of these quantities. They would all go up. All right, good deal. What else affects blood pressure? How else might you control it? Well, there's something called the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Your kidney is always releasing a chemical called renin. Renin from the kidney, renin, renal. You got it? Good. Renin is an enzyme that in your blood causes the production of a chemical called angiotensin 2. So in your blood, you have a moderate value of angiotensin 2 because you are always releasing a moderate value of Renin. Okay, well, angiotensin. Angio means blood vessel. Tensin, think about the word tension. So literally, it's a blood vessel tensor. Thus, it is going to cause vasoconstriction to go. No, it's going to cause vasoconstriction. There we go. With vasoconstriction, total peripheral resistance is going to go up. And thus, blood pressure is going to go up too. Meanwhile, Angiotensin 2 affects blood volume with a one-two punch. It causes you to get thirsty. The thirstier you get, the more you drink. The more you drink, the more your blood volume goes up. Meanwhile, angiotensin 2 causes you to make two hormones, aldosterone and antidiuretic hormone. Both of them restrict your peeing. They decrease the amount of pee you make. If you make less pee, blood volume goes up. Blood volume goes up, blood pressure goes up to, <clears throat> excuse me, lose my voice here. Luckily, we are almost done. Got a question here? We will do this in class. Another chemical that affects blood pressure is something called atrial natriuretic peptide. Natriuretic means having to do with sodium in the P. Na, sodium, natrium means sodium. Uresis, think about that as urination, diuresis, for example, peeing. So this is going to have something to do with, peeing, with uh, sodium in your pee. Basically what happens, if your atria stretch, atrial cells release A and P. And by the way, if your atrial cells stretch, your heart is saying, whoa, there's probably too much blood. Let's get rid of some. Now, A and P causes you to pee and A. It causes you to excrete sodium in your urine. What this is going to do, if, you pee, if you're peeing away more sodium, osmotically you're going to pee away more water. Blood volume is going to go down. Thus, blood pressure is going to go down too. Now, also ANP is a vasodilator. It drops your resistance, which drops your blood pressure. Okay. One last, no, two last topics. Two last topics. Look at this graph of our blood vessels down here, and the blue line represents area. Notice the capillaries have the greatest area. This makes sense because capillaries are the sites of exchange. Notice that velocity is greatest in the aorta closest to the heart. It gets really, really low in the capillaries. Then actually picks up in the veins. As our area decreases, speed is going to increase. Okay? So make sure you know these two graphs and these two relationships. They will be on your test. Last but not least, what happens to your blood when you're getting hot, when you're exercising? Well, your blood flow to your heart is going to triple, so you can pump blood better. Your blood flow to your skin is going to quintuple, so you can radiate heat away. Last but not least, your blood flow to your skeletal muscles is going to go up 11-fold, so you can move. With that, we're done. See you later.